The sundial located in the Place du Chateau in the city at Carcassonne was created by R. R. J. Rohr in 1961. The motto is Seize the Day. There are symbols for five major planets at the top. Their configuration may have some date significance, but it's not possible to measure it accurately enough to know. The part of the dial that casts the shadow that tells the time is called a style and is part of the gnomon. In this case the wire is both style and gnomon. The gnomon is orientated parallel to the Earth's axis and so points south. So the dial faces southwest. As a result the dial is not illuminated until 12 noon and the hour lines start at 12 noon and end at 8 p.m. Notice that the 12 noon hour line is vertical. That tells us that this sundial gives local time and not French time because the sun must be directly overhead to illuminate it. Carcassonne is on the longitude of 2.3 degrees east. French noon is determined when the winter sun is over the longitude of 15 degrees east. It will take another 51 minutes before the sun is over Carcassonne. The gnomon casts a line shadow. This dial provides much more information by incorporating a nodus. The circular shadow of the nodus enables you to read the month of the year approximately. The sun travels from the winter solstice on December the 21st when it is over the Tropic of Capricorn in the Southern Hemisphere at a latitude of minus 23 degrees 27 minutes. It progresses to the spring equinox when it is over the equator at 0 degrees latitude. Then on to the summer solstice when it is over the Tropic of Cancer at plus 23 degrees 27 minutes in the Northern Hemisphere. Then it returns crossing the equator at the autumn equinox. These angles are called the sun's declination and the dial gives seven declination lines. Using the shadow of the nodus you can tell which sign of the zodiac you're in. If it's before Christmas then you are in Scorpio. If it's after Christmas then you're in Aquarius. There are 12 signs of the zodiac each lasts for 30 degrees of the Sun's longitude. The first is Aries and this starts at the Sun's zero declination on the 21st of March. A standard sundial can be up to 14 minutes slow in February. In this picture it's actually one o'clock in February. The error is due to the elliptical orbit of the Earth and the tilt of its axis. This variation is referred to as the equation of time. The dial can be almost 16 and a half minutes fast on November the 2nd. The figure of 8 is an analemma which is used to correct this error. This analemma for 1 o'clock is a plot of the sun's declination against the equation of time. Starting at the top of the analemma this will be close to December the 21st, the winter solstice. Moving left and down will take you through February the 13th when the sun is slow by minus 14.2 minutes. Continuing down it crosses the one o'clock hour line on April the 15th and continues down the right hand side until it reaches the bottom in late June. Then the nodus shadow comes up the left side of the figure eight through July and August to cross the one o'clock hour line on September the 1st. The shadow continues up the right side through September, October to November the 3rd when the sun is 16 minutes early and has a declination of minus 15 degrees. The dial is also a moon dial. On a clear night the moon can cast a shadow from about seven days before full moon until seven days after full moon. This is indicated on the dial at the bottom right. At full moon the sun and the moon are on opposite sides of the earth and so if the sun shows 12 o'clock on the dial at midday the moon will show 12 o'clock on the dial at midnight. 
The lunar month is approximately 29 and a half days, and the moon arrives above a given point 48 minutes later each day. So the day after full moon, the moon's shadow is on the 12 o'clock hour line, when the time is actually 12.50. So to read the time, you must add 50 minutes. The diagram on the dial tells you how much time to add or subtract according to how many days you are after or before full moon. The really fascinating aspect of this dial is that it shows Italian and Babylonic hours. The Italian clock has 24 equal hours in a day starting at sunset. So zero hour starts at 4.30 p.m. in midwinter and 7.30 p.m. in midsummer. The plus four on the dial represents four hours before sunset. This system of timekeeping was in use in Europe from about 1200 to 1800. Babylonic hours are very similar, except that they start at sunrise. Since this dial cannot show sunrise, we can work out and check that seven hours after sunrise in midwinter is shown as 2.20 p.m. So sunrise must be at 7.20 a.m. See if you can work out sunrise in midsummer using the 10 hours line. So it's possible to work out the time of sunrise and sunset for any time of the year even if the sun's not shining. So you see you get great value for money out of this dial. Sadly R.R.J. Ruhr died in 2002. And by the way, sun rises at Carcassonne in midsummer at 10 past 4 a.m.